So now that we've gotten BSG underway, let's take a step into the second part of our discussion of strategy, and that's about the corporate strategies. Thus far, for the most part, we've been talking about how companies operate in single business lines. Now we're going to broaden that to consider when they choose to operate in multiple business lines, and we're going to also capture some of the other things corporations do to try to gain an advantage besides operate in that single business very effectively. And so when we talk about corporate strategies, we have several different topics that we're going to deal with. We're going to talk about what businesses should we be in, how do we manage those businesses to generate synergy, and then how large do we need to be in each of these business segments. <clears throat> At the bottom of the screen is one of my favorite Dilbert cartoons. I apologize that it didn't reproduce better. But in the first frame you see uh, Dogbert telling Dilbert that I'm going to operate a bar and a uh, art gallery together and you're thinking, wait a minute, Dilbert says, what do those two have to do with each other? And then in the final frame you see the synergy that they generate. Dogbert says, I'm going to get the people drunk and then they're going to pay, uh, pay for this horribly overpriced art. And while I don't exactly uh, appreciate the alcohol reference, maybe it's a pretty good indication of that's, that's how some businesses work. They, they get your judgment down and then they take advantage of you. But you can see how that's how those two businesses go together. You get people drunk, you make money off the alcohol, and then you sell them horrible art at a way too high price, and you make a lot of money there, and they fit together. One of the things I want you to see about uh, this idea of diversification and multi-product strategies is it isn't just for big companies. <clears throat> On the right side of the of the screen you see a standard lawn trailer. You see these over uh, in Wichita Falls all the time in the summer people driving around with the various lawn equipment in it cutting all uh, cutting different people's grass and then in the picture on the left side you see these beautiful Christmas lights. Uh, when we moved to Texas uh, many years ago when I retired from the Air Force this first time we'd seen this idea of Christmas lights on the roof lines and I thought wow that's really pretty and my wife loved them and said, well, I want you to call and find out how much that, that costs. Well, I did, and I found out it costs a lot. And I said, well, we're not going to do that. But they're an example of a diversification strategy. I was teaching an undergraduate strategy class, uh, and I had a student in the class that I knew had his own lawn cutting business. And I suspected they might go together. And I asked him this question, do you know of anybody that does the light business? And he says, yeah, I do. And I wish I'd had a camera rolling because this was a great example of a uh, thoroughly average undergraduate perfectly explaining uh, one of the rationales for a multi-product or diversification strategy. I said, really? You've got your own Christmas light business. Why is that? He goes, well, he said, I've got the time because I don't cut much grass in uh, November, December, and January. I've got the trailer that I use to haul around my lawn stuff in the summer and the Christmas light stuff in the winter. I've got tall trailers I use to trim trees in the summer and I use them to get up on the roofs in the winter. And perhaps most importantly is I have a customer list. Because one thing you know about somebody that pays you to cut their grass, they're willing to pay money to have uh, you do something around their house that a lot of people do for themselves. And so I cross sell my customer list from uh, my lawn service and try to sell my Christmas light services. And so you see that they took some underused and common resources and leveraged a customer list to create two businesses that seemingly don't necessarily have a lot to do with each other. But we see big companies do this as well. Now this is a situation where you may have a hard time remembering the world as it used to be. This is a picture of a gas station in front of a Walmart. Uh, Murphy Oil is the company that Walmart cooperates with, but you can bet that Walmart uh, draws a heavy price for that. And so you think, well, this is the way it's always been. Actually not. Walmart put the first gas station in front of a store in 1994, 20 years ago. So you can still go to some Walmart locations and see that they don't have a gas station in front of them or associated with them. But then you think about what does it take to make for a good gas station? Let's face it, gas prices are largely commodities, uh, or gas is largely a commodity. People are not brand that brand uh, loyal, so it's about price and convenience. And guess what? Where do 
thousands of people go every day to take care of products and people who are somewhat price sensitive that would be to a Walmart and wouldn't it just make sense that if you put gas in front of that store that should sell a lot that seems obvious to us now but it didn't used to be that way because grocery stores didn't used to have gas stations in front of them now it's common but it goes back to that I have an asset that would be called a parking lot with space near the road that typically is not where people park and have lots of customers how can I get more business or more profit out of this relationship the fundamental question when you look at multi-product or diversification strategies though is this why are these two businesses worth more together than they are separately and you're going to see me reference this several times in our discussion why are they worth more together than they are separately <clears throat> and the answer is synergy synergy is one of the great buzzwords of the 21st century <clears throat> but I want to tell you what synergy uh, is really like I think in a lot of cases and that's pirates treasure what do I mean by that people believe there's pilot treasure they search for pirate treasure and they seldom find pirate treasure and I think synergy is a lot the same way so in strategy terms synergies where I add one and one and get ten or at least five so together I put two things together and they're suddenly worth a lot more together and sometimes that's true but it's like pirates treasure it's not near it's not found nearly as often as people think you should so how does diversification create additional shareholder value how does it make more money these are the reasons the basic reasons that it works one is economies of scope and I'll talk more about economies of scope later but this is about leveraging your core competencies sharing activities developing new competencies because you're in these multiple product lines and these new competencies that you develop are able to help you throughout and I have a great chart that will explain this a little bit more the next thing is is it can create market power and what typically is market power is when you take porters by forces and you shake them and when you're done shaking them they are more favorable to the company or the industries that are in the middle of the chart uh, and again I'll talk more about that on a slide and then you have unrelated diversification and what that says is hmm don't really have much in common between these businesses and we don't really share much in common between these businesses but yet it seems to work out pretty well um, and the reason it does is because company headquarters is very good at what it does and again we'll talk more about that later but let me give you a couple of examples of diversification strategies in class we've already talked about Allegiant Airlines uh, they are an airline but what do they also do? They sell hotel packages and vacation stuff. So you see they take that customer base on a mission and are able to leverage that contact into additional profit by partnering with hotels, partnering with uh, various sorts of vacation supplies. Honda. When I say Honda, what do you think of? You think of, well, cars. And you think of, well, uh, Lexus, luxury cars. Mm, what about boats? Yeah, they have a marine division, outboard motors. How about lawnmowers? Yep. Motorcycles? Yep. Jet skis? Yep. Power generators? Yep. What do all these things have in common for the most part? Internal combustion engines, which is seen as a great uh, advantage or, or core competency of Honda. And you can see that they also can leverage common parts. So by sharing activities, they can cross sell their customers. In many cases, their points of distribution are one and the same. That's an example of a diversification strategy. We'll talk about their, their competitor, Toyota, though, in the next video. Join me then.